Welcome back to Workshop Wednesday. It's a getting started topic. Those of you who are beginners will love this topic. We're gonna to talk about the easiest way to use Google Tag Manager in WordPress. Now, before we get too far into this, of course, welcome. My name is Chris Mercer. I do go by Mercer and I'm the co-founder of measurementmarketing.io. Maybe you found us through our podcast and talks that we're always out there giving. Maybe you found us through other platforms that you're a part of and you can see our content on some of those, or at least some of our content. Or maybe you're already a Measurement Marketing member, whether it's a free toolbox member, which we obviously encourage you to be, or a paying academy member where you've upgraded your membership and really working with instructors now and improving your skills. However you have found us, welcome. We're glad to have you here. It's our job to help Help people like you learn how to use tools like, in this case, Google Tag Manager. And we're going to do that using the measurement marketing framework. Remember, five key stages you plan. You have to think about what questions you want to answer, what information you need to be able to collect to get those answers, and ultimately, what actions will you take based upon those answers. Then you build. That's what today's workshop is all about, helping you to build out WordPress in this case, getting Tag Manager on your WordPress site and all the different tweaks you can use because you have a WordPress site. So we're gonna talk about that. Once you have everything building out, then you can start building reports. Ultimately, you start forecasting your near future based upon your recent past. And then you start to optimize because you're gonna measure against your forecast and that'll tell you what's, what's working, what's not. And you scale what's working, you fix what's not. All right, with all of these workshops, of course, you wanna make sure you focus on one new thing, that's one new concept, one new thing to learn, one new way of thinking about something, maybe a different technique that you can use. And then when you practice that, come back, watch this again, you'll pick up another one new thing. Getting started, the easiest way to use Google Tag Manager in WordPress. Now we're just gonna go ahead and dive right in as we often do. And we're gonna start, you know, Tag Manager. That's kind of what we're all here for. So when you have your Tag Manager container set out, you normally get to this part, especially when you first start setting it up. You've got the head part. You need to put this in the head of the page. You need to put this in the body of the page. Now, if you're a developer, if you've got some technical skills, you technically probably don't need this workshop. However, let's assume that you don't. What you need to do is copy this part and put it into the head page. If you cannot get it into the head of the page, you can put it in the body. This part doesn't ever go in the head, always has to stay in the body. Just a little mental note there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this particular part, I'm gonna copy this out, and I need to get it installed on a WordPress. So how do I go through and do that? Well, I'm gonna show you multiple ways to go through and do this. Now, one way you might do this is you come into WordPress in your dashboard, you go into your appearance section, you can go into your theme editor, and you can actually edit your theme. Now. Most developers would already tell you like, okay, you don't want to edit your theme within WordPress because something goes horribly wrong. The whole thing can crash and then you're out of luck because your th site just got taken down and you broke it. So, uh, you know, best practice would be not to actually edit it here. You certainly could, but you're taking your risk. So I wouldn't do it here. You can do it through, you know, FTP or whatever else. Now, all of that said, the way that WordPress works is through updates. WordPress updates all the time. So if I edit this theme called Poseidon, if I edit that, and I change it by putting in Tag Manager code and then Poseidon updates, it's gonna blow out all those changes and all my measurements go down. So what are you supposed to do? Well, you're, what you're supposed to do, and if you really are gonna edit your theme directly, you have to create a child theme. And that's again, working with your developer, it is 100% a WordPress thing, so you can just look it up if you're not familiar. You would create a child theme and you edit the child theme. In our case, we don't have a child theme created, so the theme is not a good way for us to do that. Now, if there were ways in the theme I would wanna do that. And I'm gonna show you that in our uh, member site here. Okay, so now we're in the back end of our member site theme. Now, our theme for the member site currently is Divi. So we're using Divi for that. So I just clicked on Divi and in the theme settings itself, so this is not editing. You can see where it says, add the code to the head of your blog, perfect. This is the head, right? Head, perfect, this is great. So I can just, oops, come back in and I can say, okay, add the code in. Now, one thing that I did change, if you see right in here, it says end Divi and, and Divi Google Tag Manager. The reason I put Divi in here when I copied and pasted the script from our Tag Manager container, this is the one we actually use, the reason that we do that is to let the team know where to find that script. So we put in Divi because then people know, oh, if I try to figure out how Tag Manager is getting on this page, I know it's because of Divi and the integration within Divi and they know to come in here. And what's great about a lot of WordPress themes, a lot of them have these options where you can come into the WordPress theme itself and it's got a space for you to put in measurement code or tracking code for the head, in this case, also for the body. And that's where you can put in, this is the, the no script part, right? This body part that comes down here. So I would just grab this and paste it in. So using the theme, if you can, I think that is the very best option for a WordPress site. Definitely do this. Now, 
sometimes you don't have that option. So in the case of our marketing site, this is our, our WordPress site for the marketing site, we use Elementor. Well, Elementor, sadly, at least as of now, does not have a really quick and easy way to get this. They have this integrations. We go, cool, let's do integrations because Divi had integrations. And you see, it's not at all the same thing. There's no place to copy and paste code. So it's not really set up for that, right? It doesn't mean it won't be in the future, but it doesn't seem like it is now. They want you to use plugins, right? They want you to add that, that capacity into your WordPress site, which is what we're going to do next. So I'm going to come back to our demo store and we're going to add in a plugin. This is a plugin that I recommend you use a lot. It is something we have used forever. We're going to go into uh, actually plugins and then add new. This is just obviously how you add a plugin to WordPress. And we're going to search for uh, Google Tag Manager for WordPress. So we're going to get that in play and we're going to see what should pop up this one. Yep. You want the one by this guy right here. This plugin has been around forever. It's been around since before Tag Manager, right? So like, not quite. Actually, Tag Manager came out and within relatively quick period of time, this plugin came out. This guy's been on it from the start. Now, they've done a fantastic job updating it. It's updated all the time, all the time. So we're gonna click on install now. Of course, you always wanna test with a WordPress site, of course. If you have a plugin, you wanna install and test and make sure it's not gonna break things, you know, so standard WordPress rules apply. But in this case, I know it works. So we're gonna click on install and then activate to officially activate our plugin. And at that point, it's now gonna be in our settings section. That's where this one shows up. So you go to settings and then Google Tag Manager. Now, this is very simple to set up. It's going to ask for our container code. Of course, that's this right in here, our little number right in there. This is the container id also this number right here same thing so we're going to paste that in and that's it now it says where do you want me to put your container code well we can put it in the footer which is at the bottom of the page technically this is the worst place that you know google really wants you to put it because what's happening is it's the head part of the page the body part of the page loads and then the footer stuff loads well that means google tag manager is loading last and it's being activated kind of last so then it starts its measurement stuff last right which you know again not horrible it's definitely definitely 100 good enough to get going so i recommend that you do that if that's what you want to do 100 still recommend you do that um but again that's you know sometimes you, you, you if you can get it in a different area like you can with divi or something like that i would do that instead however that said we do this right i want you to i want to emphasize we do this stuff for a living in our marketing site we do this because it works just fine it is good enough to get going now if you have more technical chops you have a developer you can go through and you can set these other ways up and and this is most important you can also turn it off so if you don't want to maybe you did you have divi and you put the, your script inside the Divi theme or even another theme like Optimize Press or something else that has those uh, that space for the code and you put your actual tracking scripts in there, then you can still use this plugin for another reason. I'll show you that in just a second. And you just click off, which means it's not going to put the container code on the page. It's just gonna use it for other things like your e-commerce tracking, which I'm gonna show you here in just a moment. But for now, we're gonna keep it on the footer because you know we don't have anything on the page. So we're gonna click on Save Changes. And when we do that, we should be able to go back to our site, which I'm just gonna pop up here in a new tab. And we should be able to use Tag Manager right here. And we see, oh, there's Google Tag Manager. It looks like it's showing just fine. And we've got our debugger that we're gonna be opening up in just a moment so we can see it, right? So there's our container, perfect. Now I'm gonna start previewing because I wanna show you what this plugin really does. Um, I'm gonna copy this out because we're gonna come back to this page. First, I'm gonna go into uh, the plugin itself. So this is the, the plugin, right, in the settings section. And I'm just gonna turn on some stuff, right, a lot of this. Again, you will not have to do this. I'm just doing it so you can see all the fun stuff that you could theoretically have access to here and set up. Now, keep in mind, we literally just installed this, so nothing's really set up, but you'll get the idea. So I'm gonna come through here. This is if we had a little geo thing, we could set up all sorts of fun stuff. Okay. so. Now I've got a bunch of that. And what it's doing here, and this is for those of you that know Tag Manager, that what this is plugin will do, even if this is set to off, it will now collect all this additional behaviors and information and it pushes it into the data layer, right? It pushes it into the data layer. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go into Google Tag Manager, we're gonna go to preview mode, and we're going to preview our little demo store. We already have set up here, so we're gonna paste that in. This should, with any luck, connect us into the demo store, which it does. 
And now we're gonna go back into Tag Assistant. So we're gonna show you here, if I pull up on this page, I go into my data layer, look at all this fun, juicy details that I can take advantage of as a management marketer. So there's my logged in state, the visitor type. Uh, theoretically, this is nothing you would obviously send for, uh, you know, the PII wouldn't go to analytics, but remember you can keep it in the data layer because it's just in the browser window itself. Remember PII is okay in the data layer because it's not being permanently stored anywhere. Um, but you would never, ever, ever send PII to Google Analytics or Facebook or anything else. Platforms don't want it, so you probably don't even need to collect it. Uh, but then you've got visitor IP, again, still technically PII stuff. I wouldn't send that anywhere unless you hash it first, but you have access to all this stuff that you can push into the data layer, right? And again, you probably don't need access to PII stuff, so I wouldn't even worry about putting it in the data layer, but you could, right? It's all in there with this Google Tag Manager for WordPress plugin. It makes it pretty simple to grab stuff. The real reason that you would want this stuff, and I'm gonna take off a lot of this. Actually, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna keep these on there. Um, and I'm gonna pull out, actually I won't, because we're just playing with this anyway, and we'll take it off eventually. Um, in the, post. So let me go back into the demo site. We're going to go into a post. Let's just say a little webinar post. So I go to my webinar post, go back into my tag assistant. Here's my awesome webinar post. Look at this. So you've got title, you've got the author name, whoever the author was, the date it was published. Imagine if you were running content marketing and, and you could really start building reports by author, by engagement, by author, or by results, by author or date. There's lots of stuff that you can pull in here to group information. It's harder to get this unless you had a developer before. Now with this plugin, it's just checking a couple of boxes and saying, hey, make sure if you see the author, push it into the data layer. And you can turn that stuff on and off with the Google Tag Manager for WordPress plugin. It's just as simple as doing this, right? So pretty, pretty cool stuff that you have access to with this plugin. Now, the other reason that I wanted you to use this, and, and especially if you're using e-commerce and more importantly, WooCommerce, assuming we're doing a WordPress site, you click on WooCommerce and you can use either standard e-commerce, right? The classic e-com or enhanced e-commerce. Now, if you're on a true WordPress store, you should be using enhanced e-commerce because it just works a lot better. So we're going to go ahead and check this option and we're going to and you can see how much other stuff we have down here, right? There's a lot of different options. That's what I love about this plugin. They are constantly innovating it and making it better and better. So now I've got that activated with WooCommerce. So let's go back to our uh, demo store. And I'm gonna go to where it says shop. This is our little WooCommerce store. We're gonna go click on add to cart. So we have just a couple of hits that have come through that are e-commerce-y style hits. I'm gonna go back into Tag Assistant. Here's on my products page. And now in my data layer, so I of course have all the other stuff I had access to, but look, e-commerce data layer set up already organized for enhanced e-commerce. So I could be using this to report an impression in the general product list of this particular product. And I can give all those details to Google Analytics so it can start building enhanced e-commerce reports. It also knows that there is an add to cart and I know which product I added to cart. So I could send that information to Google Analytics. I could send it to Facebook and whoever else I needed to know. So all courtesy of the Google Tag Manager for WordPress plugin. It is a fantastic, fantastic plugin and is absolutely by far the easiest way to get WordPress on your site. Now, in our case, in this Elementor, remember we use Elementor on our main marketing site. Remember, we can't really put the code on the page. We didn't edit our theme directly. We didn't want to do that. So we use this plugin. So if I go into settings right here, we go to Google Tag Manager. You can see that we've got this plugin installed and we are putting it on the footer. Now, part of the reason that I'm doing this is just to prove the point that we do this stuff for a living and the footer still works. So we're kind of like, yeah, we know we can go and hire a developer and put it into the, the theme itself. And yes, technically you really should, but I just want to emphasize you do not have to. So even though it's like, hey, it's not recommended by Google, it's only because all the measurement stuff then starts starting to measure after everything's already loaded. And then it figures, and then, then, then it starts recording what just happened, right? So you don't miss, you typically aren't missing anything. You still get incredible usefulness out of it. And so I wanted to, we just kind of do this to make sure that you know like, it's okay, right? It's okay. You can put it in the foot of the page, get good enough to get going, and then come back and make it better later. In our members area, we don't do the foot of the page. We do the Divi, because the Divi, settings in our case, because we're using Divi and it has those options. Um, as we saw here, we do it. This is just better, right? It's a better way of doing it. So do that. Ultimately, probably edit the theme, but you would have to create a child theme and make sure that that child theme is protected from updates because there's nothing worse than editing your theme. And then it, all those changes get blown out when somebody updates the WordPress site. So, uh, but again, I personally getting started, just use this, use the Google Tag Manager for WordPress, get it started in your footer, get good enough to get going, come back and make it better later because you can always make it better later. All right, with that,
What was your one thing? Hopefully this was a nice, quick, easy lesson of figuring out different ways that you can get Tag Manager on your pages and maybe just a very, very surface quick tour of what that Google Tag Manager for WordPress plugin can do for you and more importantly for your data layer in Google Tag Manager. Because if you use Google Tag Manager at all for any period of time, you will eventually want a better data layer. Now, if you want more workshops like this, of course, you just want to go ahead and subscribe to our channel. Uh, we are very close, actually, I think to a thousand subscribers. So maybe you will be number 1000. That would be cool. Uh, next week's workshop, by the way, Beyond Basics, how to set up click traps and to catch bots in Google Analytics. So we're going to talk about that. And if you are not yet a measurement marketing member, you also have access to workshops back there. You've got the traffic tracking toolkit, GTM cook toolkit or cookbook. There's so much stuff back there. How to set up traffic tags and ACE goals and everything else we've got. Uh, lots of tools for the measurement marketer. They are completely free. I think there's over 40 tools back there now. There's just really, now's the time. Measure.tip slash www. Go there, activate your free membership. Just requires your name and email. Or if you really want to upgrade your skills and you really want to learn this and you want to be able to work with instructors to get this stuff done for you or your company, measure.tip slash get academy, join the Measure Marketing Academy. That would be my suggestion with that. All right. With that, we officially bring this one to a close. This has been Getting Started, the easiest way to use Google Tag Manager for WordPress. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next workshop. Take care.